Hello and welcome back to the Toronto Website Developer.com. I am Pete Uworski, the Toronto Website Developer specializing in Drupal. And in this video tutorial series, I want to introduce you to the Features module. Uh, this is something that I've got a lot of emails about, questions on how to use it and what it is. And so I thought it'd be good to cover it off. I don't know how long the tutorial series is going to be because it depends on how crazy we want to get and what the viewership is like for the actual series. So with all that said, I'm over at TorontoWebsiteDeveloper.com. Here on my video, uh, here on my site, you can purchase my video tutorial series as I develop them under my Drupal store. Uh, each sale goes to help me to continue to develop these, keep them free and keep them frequent. Uh, the more you buy, the more you save on the site. So each tutorial starts at $20, uh, but if you buy a few, they're a lot less. Again, uh, as always, uh, each purchase helps me to continue to develop these, keep them free, keep them frequent. So I greatly appreciate all the support thus far. Alternatively, if you can't afford the $20, but you want to help out, please just leave a thumbs up or leave a comment on YouTube. That said, over at drupal.org slash project slash features, this is the module we're going to be checking out. Um, at the time of recording, I'm looking at 7.x 2.4. And so in a nutshell, what features allows you to do is take a lot of the configuration that sits in your database and put it into code. Um, one of the at least pain points in my mind in scaling a Drupal site is that Drupal keeps a lot of its configuration in database tables, which means when you're pushing to production, uh, you can have some problems there. So features allows you to take some of that configuration and put it into code so that you can go from, say, a development staging to production server. So in order to mimic that, what I've done is I've created two sites, localhost D7 features, localhost D7 sandbox. So features would be my dev machine and then sandbox would be like my production machine. So what I want to do is, as a first example, I'm going to show you how we can create features. But before we do that, you're going to need the module. So I've done that with Drush, and I just did a simple, um, I'm in here in my site. So I just want Drush DL features, features, C tools, uh, and I did admin menu as well. Admin menu isn't related to features or C tools. Uh, it's just a nice admin menu toolbar that I have here. I always get questions on what is that and why are you using it? So I'd recommend it, uh, but it's entirely up to you. But you're going to want to go ahead, download those two. And then once you do that, you're going to want to enable C tools and features and just throw in a dash Y flag there. Um, if you don't have Drush or you don't know what I'm talking about with Drush and what's this command line, what's going on here, you can always go. Um, I don't have it enabled, of course. Let's go into modules and where is that? I don't know, like update or something like that. I think it's this module, the update manager. So check off the update manager on uh, Drupal Core, and if you save that, it's going to tell you that there are when there are updates and that kind of thing. But then you can actually go to install new module, and so we we'll just grab the features guy here. Copy that, and then we would install from a URL, paste that, you can install. I mean, lastly, if you're, you know, you're still not there, just download uh, this guy, the tar, uh, tarball or the um, zip file, unzip them, and then you're going to place them in your uh, CD sites, all modules. And you'll see I've got features and C tools listed. Um, and so that's what you're going to do. You're going to get those. You're going to enable them. You can do that on your module site. When you go to list, you're just going to check off and then save down at the bottom. Uh, save configuration. So you'll see I've got features enabled, right? So we're good to go. Then when you have that, you can see you get this nice structure features menu and you can go into features. So what we're going to do for the first example of creating a feature is I want to create a new content type. So I've gone ahead to structure content types and you'll see I've got new test type and uh, it's just default, whatever was there, I just saved it. And then I went into manage fields and I just created this new field for features. Uh, it's a text field. And again, just saved whatever defaults were there. So I've got this new content type and new field base. Now to create a feature, because I need to get that to my production site, I don't want to go into production and start trying to rejig things and, and do the exact same thing again. It's just redundant. So instead what I do is I go to features and I create a feature. Now, first thing you have to do is name the feature. So I'm going to call this uh, feature, um, feature, why are my, where is my cap locks? Do I have cap locks on here? What's going on? Okay, I don't know, this is driving me crazy. It doesn't really matter. Uh, features, this is insane. Uh, 
whatever features tutorial content types right um we'll just call this content types i don't know why i'm struggling with the damn name so much content types okay that's what i'm calling my feature um this is going to be content type settings for my development production sites obviously you wouldn't say my production development sites it doesn't matter the package itself if you go into modules you're going to see here you've got core you've got admin you've got c tools you've got features those are all the different um packages so here because this is actually custom that i'm doing i'm going to call that custom and lastly this version drupal uh, or rather features is going to create a module out of this for you um and because theoretically you're going you know staging production whatever you want to you want to have a, a version number here because you can change this and then rebuild your feature and change it again and again and again. And so you just want to know what version of the feature you're actually working with. So it's always good um, to have one. So 7.x refers to the fact that this is Drupal 7 that we're using, any version of Drupal 7. And then I'm just going to put 1.0. That's my uh, version. And so you'll see the examples down here. Now, I told you that we're using content types. So I'm gonna go ahead and check off my content type. You'll see on the right here, you get a whole bunch of different stuff that you can select from. So I've chosen content types, new test content type. And under the handy advanced options, you'll see that it adds auto detect dependencies. This will depend on JavaScript for you. Um, assuming you have JavaScript enabled, it will pick off the content type and then it'll pick off the fact that you need features because I'm using features. Um, but also that on my content type, I have a body and, uh, or rather two field bodies, which are the body and the field new field for features. And of those, I also have two instances. I have instances for these two fields. And so it is going to go ahead and grab those as well. If you're not sure about field bases and field instances, just post a comment. I'll explain them to you. It's beyond the scope of this tutorial. Now, what I'd like to do is... If you don't use advanced options, you actually download the feature as a file. Um, I don't want to download it. I just want Drupal to save it. So uh, I'm going to go to advanced options here and I'm going to type in sites, all modules, custom. And so it's going to save my feature under custom. And I do that by just clicking generate feature. And now if I open up my command line, you'll see. I've got a custom directory. So I go into CD custom and I've got content types in there. And so content types isn't necessarily the best um, name. I probably should have said feature content types, but that's fine. Um, if you got errors doing that, it's likely around permission settings for your folders. Um, so, I mean, if you know how to fix them, I would say go ahead and do it. You just need to make sure that the server uh, user has the ability to write to the folder that you're trying to write to. It might just be too much of a pain. So if you can't use the generate, you're just going to go ahead and, uh, of course, I don't have the ability to download. Let's take a look at this guy. Go to recreate and just go to download feature. And you'll see that it wants to give me a tar file. So I would just go ahead and save that, untar it, and then drop it in like I just dropped it in. Do all that manually. Or rather, not that I just dropped it in, drop it into whatever folder you want to drop it into as long as it's in sites all modules or sites, whatever site you're using slash modules. Um, if you haven't set it up as sites all modules. Now, with all that said, um, I've got this handy feature on this site. I need to get the handy feature over here as well. So let's do that from the command line. Um, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to uh, make a directory in a couple folders up. I think it's where am I now? One more E seven sandbox sites, all modules, uh, custom, right? Okay. And then we're going to, uh, we're going to copy dash R. Um, what did I call it again? Custom. So yeah, well, everything from custom and I'm going to put it in a couple up. One more, and then D7 sandbox sites, all modules, custom, right? And so now if I go into, you'll see on the other side, I've got the same feature there as well. So now I'm going, this is my pretend production site. I'm gonna go into modules. Uh, 
That's odd. I wonder what's going on there. They can't actually read my stuff. So this is a great time to take a look at what's going on here. Content types, Peter, none, LS. Oh, do, 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 do. what does D7 features, sites, saw, module, custom, dash LA. Content types, scenes. The custom class dash LA. Read, write, execute, read, write, execute. Administrator system. Interesting. Different ownership. So let's change this. Let's go Chamad. Where is it? Actually, let's go chown dash r um, administrators dot system content types. Okay, and let's reload my page here. There we go. That's gone. And so under custom, we're going to go ahead and check off the content types. There we go. And now if I go to features, you'll see that I've got under custom one content type. It is the content type settings for my development and there's no signature to it. So I don't know what the unavailable refers to, but there's my 7.x 1.0. It's in the default state. That's something we'll talk about later. But if I go to structure content types now, you'll see that I get new test type. And if I check out my manage fields, I have this new field as well. And so that's it for creating your first feature. That's um, kind of it in a nutshell. It's not too difficult, but you can see you can take the actual settings right out of there and put it into a new site. And that's all done through the module. In the next video, Zora, what we'll do is we'll take a look at how we change that, rebuild it, copy it over, and then what that looks like. So that's it for this now. Um, if you have any questions, please post a comment on YouTube. Let me know and I'll get back to you. Um, as well, if this video helped you, please leave a thumbs up and we'll see you for the next one. Thanks very much.